now let us connect all that information into the earthquake resistant design of buildings. What are the, the summary of those concepts which are required before we move forward? This is already covered that we have different forms of hazard curve, but this last one is, uh, uh, is more clear or you can say more convenient to understand. Probability of exceedance in 50 years let us say if 50 years is our design life or our period of interest in future. So, we select uh, let us say 10 percent we call it DBE, we select 2 percent we call it MCE, we can select some other number may be 50 percent probability of exceedance in 30, uh, 30 percent in 50 years that may be uh, SLE. right? Uh, so, we can uh, this is our choice now in earthquake resistant design we can tolerate different probabilities of exceedances and design on different numbers depending upon the mutual consensus between all stakeholders obviously the client will be the main stakeholder in that so now you can for example if i select 10% as my hazard definition i call it one dbe hazard level all I can do is that I can perform that PSHA process for each site in my study area and plot its hazard curve for one hazard parameter let us say PGA and then pick the 10 percent number from all the curves and then plot a map for 10 percent probability of exceedance. Right? So, whenever we ma uh, construct a map uh, using hazard curves we have to first fix the probability of exceedance in some years, because we have to pick that number from the hazard curve for each pixel or for each site. right? So, the map will always be associated with some probability of exceedance in some years and uh, obviously, this can be now converted into return period now you know that. So, actually what happened by for constructing this map is that I have let us say thousands of points in this study area and each point have a hazard curve. So, I go into each hazard curve and pick a number for PGA hazard curve, I pick a number corresponding to 10 percent on y axis and select the number for each pixel or point and construct this map. Right? So, map will always be on some definition of hazard. In this case, it is 10 percent, you can also go for 2 percent, it will be a different map, obviously 2 percent map will show a higher number right? and 2 percent probability of exceedance in 50 years can be converted into 2, 4, 7, 5 years return period. So, now the numbers are obviously higher. Similarly, you can also make a map for SLE level or any intermediate level. For example, this is 475 years, this is 2, 4, 7, 5 years. Let us you can also make a map for 1000 years return period. right? Intermediate map in between these two maps. The obviously, the numbers will be in between these two numbers. So, you can also convert this 1000 years into some probability of exceedance in some years. So, different types of structures can define their design hazard level in the form of return period also. For bridges, we may use 1000 year return period as the design level. For buildings, we use 475 years as the design level and for dams and some other important hydraulic structures, we may go for 3000 year return period uh, as the design level. right? Obviously, the number will be even higher for 3000 year return period, because this is 2, 4, 7, 5 years the numbers are higher. So, you can see the, the PGA value, this is for PGA, P ground acceleration, P ground acceleration. Similar maps can be made for SS or S1. right? It is all about how, what number you pick from which hazard curve. Ultimately, hazard curve is the main output at each point and then you can construct any of these maps. So, our expectation from uh, if I talk about the context in buildings, uh, the expectation from buildings actually for these three standard hazard levels is different we expect that uh, the service level earthquake which is defined this one 50 percent probability of exceedance in 30 years if we convert that it becomes 43 year return period we expect that there should be no damage 
for design level we expect that uh, there can be some damage but it should it should not be extensive uh, and then for uh, mce level which is defined this one we expect that building should not collapse but there can be extensive damage but it should not collapse right so we entertain all three levels in pbd framework right but for some other important structures like major dams different uh, guidelines international design codes and guidelines for those structures may define their own hazard levels which may be different from these building hazard levels right so for example the in the context of major dams i cold is uh, is uh, one uh, the one international organizations which regulate the design of major dams and they have several uh, guidelines and documents which uh, prescribe the procedure for their design they define uh, the hazard level differently for example they define the mce level as an earthquake with 0.5% probability of exceedance in 50 years if you convert that it become 10000 year return period right so this is their mce level for buildings it is 2500 years approximately so now we know that uh, spectral acceleration for building design is is a more uh, important parameter or considered more widely used parameter compared to to pga there was a time when pga was the most widely used parameter right but now you know that psha can be performed for pga and for any spectral acceleration also right and you already know the definition of spectral acceleration it is the maximum response acceleration experienced by some single degree of freedom system which have a particular time period right so it means that spectral acceleration should always be coupled with some time period it is not an absolute parameter it will always be at some time period so we approximately for the sake of understanding can assume that if we idealize each building or each structure as a single degree of freedom system then the curve which is the response spectrum curve sa versus time period we have different kinds of structures on its x axis right we have low rise buildings here we have medium rise here and we have high rise here right so but there is an assumption involved in that and that is that uh, each structure is idealized as a single degree of freedom system which is a crude assumption right so if we crudely idealize each building by a single degree of freedom system uh, we are from low rise here to high rise on the right hand side and then different uh, response accelerations for future earthquake can be plotted as the spectral acceleration the concept is actually evolved from the past earthquake but the same concept can be used for future earthquake so we are already familiar with uh, how we can construct the response spectrum for any few for any past earthquake we have we have to run the single degree of freedom system again and again but uh, we have to change its time period every time right and we have to fix some damping but for future earthquake now we know that it can come from psha the response spectrum for future earthquake can be predicted from psha by picking the numbers from different hazard curves right so this is that process for future earthquake that let's say these are the two standard hazard definitions 10% and 2% we can plot the hazard curve now for pga uh this one then we can also plot for spectral acceleration at t equal to let's say 0.3 second or 3 second or any intermediate you can say spectral acceleration 0.5 second 1 second 2 second and then 3 second maybe so for the same site you may have tens or 20 you can say hazard curves and then for one particular definition let's say 10% probability of exceedance in 50 years you pick pga you pick ss you pick s1 you pick sa at 2 second 3 second 4 second and construct the future earthquake spectrum right 
So, this is the same thing you know that GMP is available in the form of PGA, but also in the form of any spectral acceleration. So, this is that process. Let us say I select 10 percent definite 10 percent probability of exceedance in 50 year. I want to construct the spectrum for DBE level future DBE level. So, all I have to do is that I have to perform PSHA for different spectral accelerations and PGA also. Then I pick the number for the same 10 percent 10 percent from each graph right. PGA will be my starting point on the spectrum. Then spectral acceleration at 0.2 second I will pick that number it will give me this point. Then spectral acceleration at 1 second for the same 10 percent I pick this number this will give me this point 0.5 second or 1 second for example, this number 2 second 3 second. So, point by point I can plot that spectrum and that will be my DBE level spectrum and it will be called as uniform hazard spectrum because I select a hazard definition of 10 percent probability of exceedance in constructing that spectrum. So, the hazard level was uniform for each point on that curve that is why it is called UHS uniform hazard spectrum. But nowadays there is a more uh, advanced or more sophisticated concept called conditional mean spectrum CMS uh, which is a different uh, methodology. So, I will simply focus on UHS here. Similarly, this red line is all the numbers are picked for a different definition of hazard now 2 percent probability of exceedance in 50 years. So, red line obviously will be higher than blue line this is my MCE level spectrum right. So, in PBD if I want to perform the DBE level dynamic analysis I should select the ground motions and match them with the blue line right. And if I want to perform the MCE level dynamic analysis of my building I should match my ground motions with this with this red line. The spectra of those ground motions for MC level analysis should be matched with this red line now right higher line. On this uh, spe spectral acceleration versus time period graph or response spectrum curve or UHS uh, for MC level two numbers are fixed in building codes one is called spectral acceleration at 0.2 second one is at 1 second they were given the notation SS and S1 and by default in building codes they are at MCE level they are defined for MCE level and then approximately converted down to DBE level right. So, uni on uniform hazard spectrum for MCE level two numbers are fixed one number is this one spectral acceleration at 0.2 second time period short building and then long building tall building relatively. So, these two numbers are on y axis these two numbers are denoted as SS and S1. So, they represent the hazard level at your site if you want to perform the equivalent static analysis. You only need SS and S1 for your site and they will be converted to the seismic loading equivalent static forces. If you want to go for response spectrum analysis you need this whole line, whole curve as an input as a representation of future loading and obviously, if you go for dynamic analysis you need the time histories as the input or representation of future earthquake, but those time histories should be modified such that their spectrum are matching with this one right. So, they should be modified. So, now our understanding of how we use all these concepts in the design of buildings or evaluation of existing buildings is almost complete. Uh, nowadays in uh, in modern building codes we have SS and S1 maps for example, this is the SS map spectral acceleration at 0 0.2 second 0 0.2 second spectral response acceleration by default they are constructed for 5 percent damping. So, this is an SS map for US each point each contour line is telling you the SS value at each site. Similarly, S1 map this is you can read here 1 second spectral response acceleration. So, this is actually S1 map right. So, we have also constructed SS and S1 maps for Pakistan recently actually more than one time. For example, this is the 
एस एस मैप स्पेक्ट्रल एक्सेलरेशन एट पॉइंट टू सेकेंड फॉर फोर सेवेंटी फाइव ईयर्स रिटर्न पीरियड विच विच मीन्स इट इज डी बी इलेवन राइट बट बाई डिफॉल्ट एस एस एंड एस वन आर डिफाइंड एट एम सी इलेवन वैन कोड सेज एस एस इट मीन्स एट एम सी इलेवन राइट बट दिस दिस मैप इज फॉर डी बी इलेवन ऑब्वियसली वैन यू हैव ऑल दैट डेटा एज दी पी एस एच ए रिजल्ट यू कैन मेक इट और रेप्रजेंट इट विद डिफरेंट मैप्स राइट सो दिस इज डी बी लेवल एस एस ईच कलर हेयर इज शोइंग यू आर रेंज ऑफ एस एस वैल्यू दिस इज एम सी लेवल एस एस स्पेक्ट्रल एक्सेलरेशन एट पॉइंट टू सेकेंड बट टू फोर सेवन फाइव ईयर्स राइट सो दिस इज अ मैप विच इज डायरेक्टली विच डायरेक्टली हैव दी एप्लीकेशन इन बिल्डिंग डिजाइन राइट इट इट शोज एट ईच पॉइंट इट शोज दी वैल्यू ऑफ एस एस and it is defined as 2475 years which means it is mce level compatible with the code definition right similarly this is s1 map spectral acceleration at 1 second for 10% probability of exceedance in 50 years uh, which means db level similarly this is uh, s1 map for mce level so this is again the second map which has direct application in the building design right so if you if you want to design a building for future or you want to define the hazard level for any site inside the country you need that first map this one ss and this last map s1 at mc level right 